So we're going to go ahead and start, guys. I think we gave people enough time to come in. Uh, this presentation is a half presentation and then part hands-on uh, demo. So how many of you guys have Git installed on your computer already? Okay. How many of you guys have a GitHub account? So everyone, right? Perfect. Saves us a lot of time. So again, we're going to be covering version control with GitHub. We're going to be talking about Git, the differences between what Git is, Git Bash, GitHub, and GitHub Desktop. I provided you guys this um, overview earlier today. You guys have an idea of what we're going to be covering, right? Okay, so how many of you guys know what version control is? So version control allows you to manage changes to a document over time. So this includes code, graphics for, for games, product development, movies, audios, anything, right? So can you guys see my cursor? No, you cannot. What about now? Perfect. So let's say you have a document, right, that you've been working on. You just created a new file. Let's say it's the 24th of February, 2017. Okay. Now. Let's say the 20th of, of March, you go ahead and you create a new file, you make changes. Now, let's say this keeps on going and going, and let's say your application breaks, okay? And you haven't been using any sort of version control. What do you do? I'm sorry? Command Z. Command Z, okay. Scream. Any other ideas? Try. Try? Okay. So this is one of the useful features of, of version control, right? It saves your behind when you make a mistake. You can go back to a previous version, right? So I don't know how many of you guys um, have been writing code for a while without version control. Uh, have you guys ever done it where you have multiple copies of your project and you save it with like different names? Okay, it's horrible, right? So perfect. So you understand the, the whole purpose of version control. So why is version control useful? So I found this image online, which I think exemplifies uh, the whole concept pretty well. It says, I have no idea what this crappy function does and how and why it works, but it seems to be important. Please don't touch it. And that's a comment, right, for that function. Now, he's telling his coworker, good comments are essential to deliver high quality, right? And the guy's like, yep. Now, imagine you have a lot of these functions and someone accidentally messes up that function, how do you go back, right? Have you guys ever, ever faced that? Oh, I haven't touched it. Oh, it's just, it's just lagging. No? So, let's go to the next one. I can see. There we go. Okay, so how can a single developer benefit from version control? Okay, imagine you have your repository right here, right? And you're working on, actually, no, I, I, I had an example for you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we're not recording my face. Uh, too bad, it's fine. I'd rather them get something. So I had this coworker at work. Uh, he's a developer and everything. He was working on an application. Uh, it was a LAMP stack application. And he was supposed to add a new feature. And I had explained to them how the workflow went right with uh, GitHub. So for every new feature, you create a new branch. You base it off of master. Uh, you make sure that everything's up to date. You pull and everything. And then you work on the feature one feature per branch, right? So that I can go in and review it, make sure everything's fine, push it up to tier. Okay, wonderful. So he didn't do that. He worked on his local copy and he was making all these changes. He never made a commit, he never added anything to, to the repository, nothing. 
And then next thing you know, his computer turns off. Uh, something happened with the editor, and then I think he he said he lost the branch that he was working on. So, what do you think he did to get all that information back? Cry? Okay. Okay. Anyone else? No. So, thankfully, I I was in Leaden Brown. Right, uh, he's a contractor and he was hired because he knows what he's doing. Right now, the problem is he didn't follow the directions. Right, and version control is very useful. So what happened is he comes to me and says, "Hey, Duan, uh, I think I lost my work. Something happened to it. It's not his fault." Right now, the guy's very frustrated. So I go to his computer and I start doing Git status. I do Git log. I want to see what he's been pushing. Nothing. So I do uh, Git log one line and then I do the graph flag to see what's been going on, nothing. Okay, so I, I ask him, where's all your work? He doesn't know where he went. Luckily, all the work that he had done was in one file, right? So that is where Control-Z helped him. Because uh, <laughs> that, that, uh, that editor saves the, the state for you. Uh, PHP Storm, I don't know how many of you guys have worked with PHP Storm. So um, you can go back. Uh, it does some internal versioning for you. Uh, every couple of minutes it saves, and it saves it in memory. So it's not as good as GitHub or Git, but it's very useful, and in this case, it saves them a lot of time. Oh, somebody posted, no? That's good. So yeah, so in this example, we're talking about how how is it useful for one person working on a project, right? Because a lot of you guys are not on team. Oh, I think I'm finally getting over the anxiety, that's good. Um, so a lot of you guys work by yourselves on side projects, right? So how do you find this useful? So one case that I find useful is when you have more than one machine. So you have a laptop and then at home you have a desktop, right? And for whatever reason, you're working on the project from both machines because when you're on the go, you can take your laptop and when you're at home, your machine's more powerful than you just wanna use that one, right? So what do you do? While you're working on your laptop, let's say it's computer A, you have a full copy of the repository that you're pulling from say GitHub. Right? Or let's say you're, you're hosting your own Git uh, repository on your own server. That's another way you can also do it. But let's say that the source of truth is up here where it says server computer, right? So when you work from computer A, you're making all these changes, making branches, pushing back, pulling any changes that, well, no, you're not pulling any changes because it's just you, right? Forever alone. So that's computer A. But let's say once you get home, you start working on computer B. So what do you do? You start pulling all the information from the source of truth, right? Just to make sure that you got all the changes that you did from computer A, you pull them down to computer B. So that's something that Git allows you to do, right? So do you guys find that useful for a single developer? Right? Perfect. It's better than carrying around like a little flash drive or something with all your projects. I used to do that before. Okay, so what is a version control system? So we've used them. Now, a version control system, according to the Grand Google, it says a version control system is a database that stores all the change records of your work. So essentially what it does is it manages change, right? That's all it does. So every change you make to the files, let it be code or timestamps or whatever it is. Uh, you can even use it for images. Um, that's very useful. I, I've, I've worked with images a lot and I've used it where I name them different things like version one, version two, and it's next thing you know you have like fifty of them and each one is like three megabytes. Next thing you run out of memory. So when multiple members of a team work together on a shared project, it is important to keep incremental changes of all individual team members in sync with a common database. Imagine having a team of five people, everyone has their own copy on their computer, and it's your job to make sure that the project is in sync without the help of GitHub. How would that work? It wouldn't, right? They would have to send you their, their files, you would have to compare them to like your source of truth, so your copy. Would you guys do that? I'm hoping I hear a lot of no, like no, I would never do that. Oh my god, okay, perfect. So, version control systems, they just manage change, right? In the, in the project and the file. Are we clear on that? Perfect. 
Okay, so there are a couple of version control systems. Are any of you guys familiar with some of these other than Git? Mercurial, perfect. Mozilla, CVS, and it's not the store. It's concurrent version system. This one, I honestly don't know what that means. TFS. Or this one. Yeah. Subversion. Hmm, that sounds possible. Hmm. Because I know, um, I don't know if it's Microsoft or if it's JetBrains, but they do have something for change management. And it's hard to see. My, I don't. I don't think it's the same thing though. Uh, there's also uh, Perforce and Subversion. So hopefully, you never have to work with all of these. You just focus on one, and you master that one system. Life. So, you might never see this term, but in case you do, I didn't until I had to put this presentation together. Uh, it's useful to know that there are different versions of uh, version control systems, right? For example, uh, I don't know if you guys have the same problem, but, and I mean, I'm working in the field, so that's kind of embarrassing, right? Um, I know how to do things, but sometimes I, I don't know the terms for these things. So, these kind of things are very useful, right? So I've worked with Mercurial. Mercurial is a bit different. It doesn't have a staging system, a staging area. And in a few slides, I'll show you guys how Git works. How it has like, you have your work role, uh, working local copy, and then you have your staging area, and then you, you have your local repository, and then you push up to the remote repository, right? So some other systems don't have it that way. It's a bit different. So how does a distributed version control system work? So let me explain what this is first. In software development, distributed version control is the form of version control in which the complete code base, including its full history, is mirrored on every developer's computer. So again, let's say we have five developers, right? And they all clone the same repository. Let's say we're all working on the main website for ISA, and we all cloned it. That means that all of us have the exact same copy on our computer without any changes that you make in the future, right? But think about it this way. And I think I'll talk about it somewhere on another slide. But imagine GitHub.com where we're hosting all our repositories. For some reason, goes down, right? What happens to our repository? It's gone, right? Right? Okay, perfect. But you guys all have a copy, right? So the last person that worked on it, that would be the most up-to-date version, given again that they pushed and they pulled and everything of the the your repository, right? So it's almost like a like a backup system by itself, right? So I, I think it's it's very useful. But looking at the at the image over here, every developer has their own copy, and they have everything. When you clone, you have the all the branches, all the commits, everything. So for example, let's say you download a copy of I don't know TypeScript. If it's on GitHub, I think it's on GitHub, and you do Git log. You can see all the commits from other developers that have been pushed to whatever branch you're on, right? I think that's incredibly useful because you can, they even have this feature called uh, blame where you can see, I've used it exactly for that one reason to blame somebody. Uh, you can see like who is responsible for making a change in a project and it's so useful. So, yes, I had this argument with uh, a, a senior developer that's more senior than me and I kept telling him, no, 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 this, this is what happened. He's like, no. Uh, he was like, I built the project before you got here. I'm like, no, 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 but I built the new project because yours was broken. And then he's like, no, no, no. So I pulled out the Git blame, and it's there. And I'm like, okay, well, there you go. So the wonderful thing about this is you can see <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> uh, developer one, right? They're pushing. They can pull the changes that developer two and three have made. Uh, they update their working copy. I'll explain what working copy is in a few slides. So, Git. How many of you guys know the difference between Git and GitHub? GitHub directory. Okay. So, Git is the version control system, right? And GitHub, well, we'll get to GitHub. So, Git is the version control system. And the way that it works is 
just like this wonderful image right here. You have your one project, right? You have your repository right here. Let's say this is uh, Joseph. He's working on one of our uh, projects and he's making changes. So in his computer, in his file system, he has a project called main, which is the name of the repository for the main website for ISD, right? He's making changes to, to this, uh, this copy. Now, as he's making changes, he adds them to the staging area, right? Once he adds them to the staging area, he says, okay, well, I think I'm ready. I'm gonna commit these changes because I wanna get them ready to push them to the remote repository. So what he does is he commits them and now they're added to the local repository, which is a copy of what you have remotely, right? With your changes. So once he does that and he's ready to push, when he does git push and whatever all the flags you are needing for whatever your case is, you push and it pushes to the remote repository, right? And if you have no issues, you'll, you'll be fine, but some people have issues and they have to do a, what's it called, merge conflicts? I've been able to move and there's, there's no problem. Yeah, so she says when you're in the stage area. Yeah. Because one warning that you get is uh, when you're trying to switch and it'll be an issue, it'll tell you you, ha you have unstaged yeah. files. Okay. So you have to save them, yeah. So yeah, so the, the biggest thing here is that you can push changes to the remote repository from your local repository. You can pull changes, right? I don't think it's any more complicated than that, to be honest, okay? And again, we'll, we'll take this and actually get our hands here and actually use Git. Uh, I created a, a blank repository and we're gonna fill it up. So everyone's gonna have a uh, commit to that repository, right? Something like that, a PR at least. So again, Git. Git is an open source version control system. Again, I'm reading this off the screen. I don't remember all this. Uh, open source version control system, both for software development as well as chip designs. It is available for free and it's a uh, distributed revision control system for tracking changes in source code during software development. Okay. Good question. Can you use Git for all things? Like, for example, if you're working on something, if it's a document, yeah. Right? And if you're able to make changes to it, yes. So, uh, I know uh, GitHub, for example, is it Git? No, it's Git. Git has a feature, is it LFS, large file system? I don't know, point is it handles large files. So you can also use it that way. Did you guys know that, uh, I think it's GitHub that has a limitation of like four gigs? What? Yeah, they have a limitation of four gigs. Yeah, for the file size. Yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly that. So that Because I, I ran into that problem trying to push a file, and they're like, no, you can't do that. Uh, okay, so Git. Git works with a bunch of different commands. I found this image online, which is kind of subjective. I, I, I don't think this is how you kind of figure where you land on the spectrum, if you're advanced or intermediate, but it's somewhat useful. So you can see that Git is just the name of the, uh, the command that you're doing, right? Not the command, the program that you're using, Git. And then you have all these commands like uh, add, clone, init, config, so those are the basics, right? So you have others like push, pull, and so on. Those are all basic. Then you have things like, oh, get status, I think is basic too, because you're just checking the status of your repository. But um, we'll cover a couple of these uh, when we do our demo, and you guys can ask a couple of questions, but uh, we'll try to cover the, the most common ones, right? Like get uh, push, pull, uh, creating a branch, checking our branches, checking the status, looking at the log, and so on. Okay. So these are on the side of advanced. These are not advanced at all. Yeah, I've seen scary things, and this is not like scary. So, Git checkout. You need to know Git checkout to do anything. So, so what does working with Git look like? Okay. So we talked about having a working directory, right? So again, let's say you download, uh, you clone. A project to your machine, right? 
when you go in there from VS Code. So on the left side of VS Code, you have your project directory, right? You can look at that and consider that your working directory, right? Because you're working with the file directly. So let's say you modify two, three files, okay? You're ready to, to add that to the staging area. So you do git add and you name the files that you want to add, right? Or you can be lazy like me. You do git add done and it adds everything, right? Wonderful. Don't do that. Um, so you do git add and it adds it to the staging area. Okay? Now let's say you're ready to add a commit. Uh, not add a commit, push it to your local repository locally, right? Because you want to get that ready to push it to the remote repository. You're like, okay, well, I'm sure I want these changes. I'm ready to commit to these changes. We're good. So you do git commit dash m for message and you put a message right make it a detail uh, not detailed well it's up to you it's a preference right would you rather go back three months from now and look at updated index or read something like updated header for metadata for seo whatever something right the more detail you have the better for you in the future when your future self comes back and looks at past self, they're gonna be disappointed, but they're gonna be, you know, informed, right? They're gonna look at your code and be like, oh, I don't know who wrote this, but they're gonna have an idea of what happened, right? So, yeah. So, from here, you can also do git checkout. So, you can check out different uh, branches that you have locally, okay? You can also do git merge. You can merge one branch to another branch. And if there are uh, merge conflicts, it will let you know, and it'll, um, it's a mess. Uh, what it does, it'll it'll try to. It shows you the difference between what is in one branch and what is in the other, and it makes you choose between what version you want to keep. Right? It's not pretty when you do it uh, manually, but on um, GitHub.com, it's really pretty. So I like it when it does it on there better. But why do PRs instead of merging locally? And then once you're ready. Right? You have everything in your local repository and you want to push it remotely, you do git push. And let's say someone else made changes, it'll ask you to do a git pull first to have those changes locally. Right? That's how it avoids having issues. Okay? Now, that was true in between the local repository and the local version of your code, or is there a gate? Because that's, if you're working with a team, it's not like anybody. Right, right. So, so, yeah, so one wonderful question. So, depending on the team that you're on, you do have what is called the git master. Uh, this is not in Git, this is like an actual person, right, on your team that is like, uh, no, that's not going into master. So for example, I work, uh, a couple of you guys know Felipe, right? So Felipe works on the front end team and I work on the platform team. I don't even know what they think I do. Um, but I manage the rep repository for the project that we're working on, right? And what I do is he creates a branch uh, for a feature that he's working on, uh, he's done with it, so he creates a PR and he's pushing it into uh, the development branch, right? So I take a look at it, make sure everything's okay, uh, but I decide to push it to that branch, right? I have to look at the code, review the code. If there are any issues, I let him know. I leave a message, and I'll show you guys uh, github.com. Uh, I'll leave a message and then he'll get it. And we'll go back and forth until I'm happy with it, and then we'll push it up the tier, right? Once we push it into staging, for example, uh, that's our like our dry run, right? Our uh, deploy, our test deploy, and then once we're good there, we push it to production. Uh, even then, you don't have well at least corporate level, right? I don't have the power to push to to master. I'm able to push the branch and everything, but then that branch, that code needs to go into the actual server for the website, right? I don't have that power. Someone pushes one little button for Jenkins to run, and they're like, okay, done. They don't let me do that, so. So GitHub, how many of you guys have used GitHub before? Perfect, okay. So let's just read this for the sake of review. So GitHub, uh, it's a web-based Git repository and hosting service available at github.com. Okay, not read that, it's a lot of words. So pretty much what it is is, it's a, think of it like a, like a hosting service for your repositories, right? A cool thing about Git is that you can host your repositories on your own server. Let's say you, you bought a, a VPS or whatever, and you're hosting your own Git. Uh, 
that was a Git party, that's not a term. Um, a Git library, right, of all your repositories, all the projects that you're working on, and you don't care if they're uh, public. You're not sharing them with the world, it's just you, right? You can do that. Uh, but let's say you do want to share them with the world and you want to benefit from all the tools that GitHub has in this build, then you can even use GitHub. All they do is host your repositories. That's all it is. Okay, does, does, that, does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Okay, perfect. They have wonderful tools. I can't imagine hosting my own repository. Uh, but this is what a single uh, repository looks like. Right? You have the name of the repository, uh, the name of the user that owns that repository, the code, you have uh, the number of commits for that specific branch. Uh, if you click on this little thing right here, I know it's going to be. But I lose the clicker. Yeah, well, this right here, I'll show you guys uh, during the demo. Uh, all the branches are here. Uh, oh, thank you so much. There we go, perfect. So you guys didn't see the last email. That's great. Okay. So, branches, they're right here. You click on this and it'll show you all the branches, right? Uh, there's other useful features like the number of contributors. Uh, if you go into insights, you can see who uh, is working. I don't say the most, but that's what I use it for. Uh, you go on there, you can see the activity, right? Uh, every member that's contributing to the project. Uh, pull requests, you guys will do that today. So, so I'm going to have you guys do a fork of a repository today. So that's why I want you guys to have your own account. Uh, when you do a fork, you have your own copy of a repos uh, someone else's repository, right? That's your repository now. You're not cloning it to your local directory. You're copying it to your account. And the way that you normally contribute is, let's say you fork the main website, you create a new branch because you're going to work on a new feature, and you're ready to submit that to our copy, right? So you do a pull request. You're requesting for us to pull your copy, of the code into our repository, right? I think that's the best way I can explain it. Yeah. Yep. And it's the same same case for, let's say we're working on the same repository and I'm asking for you to pull my branch into this other branch. So. Yeah. I find it more useful than straight up merging things through Git, through the terminal. Um, I like visuals more than anything. Uh, I'll show you guys why. Uh, when you do a PR, it, it lets you set messages, descriptions, lets you track back and forth. If anything happens, there's one little button that just says revert. Uh, that should be renamed to like save my ass. Uh, <laughs> you click on it and it reverts everything. Like it never happened. So it, it's wonderful. Well, not like it never happened, because it does leave a trail of, you did this. So, yeah. Uh, this is a GitHub desktop. So in case you don't like the terminal, and you want like a graphic user interface, uh, we do have this. Um, for Mac? Yeah, for all these things. Yeah, so this is what they say about GitHub desktop. It's a fast and easy way to contribute to projects from Windows and OSX. Whether you're a seasoned user or a new user, GitHub Desktop is designed to simplify the process and work for a while using GitHub. GitHub Desktop is an open source, electron-based app. I think that the only cool thing about this application is how it's built. Other than that, I wouldn't advise using this um, because then it becomes a crutch, right? There are things that you can do a lot faster with the terminal because you're working on the terminal anyways while you're working on your own projects. So having to switch back and forth between that and the desktop version seems kind of silly. Uh, if you really want to use something uh, that's a UI for the sake of its tools, now you're benefiting from it, right? Because it has tools that you don't have on the terminal. Uh, you can use something like, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about it, uh, Git Kraken? No. Okay, well, I'll, I'll make sure to show it to you guys uh, during the demo. but. Uh, it's very useful for, let's say, when you're trying to differentiate between uh, the different branches on a re repository. It, it's pretty, actually. Uh, all the branches are color-coded and, and, every, and everything. Uh, it 
separates everything really nice. So I'll make sure to show you guys. We're almost there to the demo. Okay, now, so what's the difference between Git and Git Bash? Anyone know? Git Bash is for Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Too, too many hands. Uh, I need just one hand. Perfect. Uh, It's funny how you say it. I might be wrong. Uh, don't assume I'm right. So <laughs> make sure you double check whatever I say. So Git Dash is an application for Microsoft Windows environments, which provides an emulation layer for a Git command line experience. So a lot of you guys that have Macs, Git comes with it, right? So it's perfect. Look at you guys. So no, Bash is an acronym for Born Again Shell. A shell is a terminal application used to interface with an operating system through written commands. So essentially, Git Bash is just a combination of Bash, along with this thing called uh, New Core Utils, which includes things like LS, Cadm, etc., which lets you use Bash shell and other Unix commands on Windows. Before I used Git Bash, I was using uh, Windows Command Prompt. I was going to quit programming altogether. Yeah. I did not like the Windows uh, Command Prompt. Uh, but with Git Bash, it lets you utilize Unix commands, right, which are much nicer to work with. Again, any question? I'm sorry? Yeah, so what Git Bash is, is you can download it if you have like a Windows machine. Uh, and you can use it not only for Git, uh, you can use it for anything you want, uh, working with other projects, whatever the case may be. Um, but you can execute Unix commands on Windows. Like, let's say you want to look at a directory. You can do ls and it lists all the files in that directory, right? So it's, it's nice. Better than using the in my opinion, better than using the command prompt. So git git dash. So git dash is just it comes together with git and bash, right? It's it's not an equivalent to GitHub or Git. You're just able to use Git with it, right? Yeah. So you should be able to use uh, access. GitHub, for example, through the terminal, even if it's not Git Bash, right? So it should be fine. Oh, you're there. Okay, so we all have Git installed. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So let's go ahead. You guys see any silly messages? I apologize in advance. Just got it. Okay, for those of you guys following along, on GitHub, we have a, a repository under our full name, right? So you guys don't have to look for that. Let me put that on Slack. Oh, this is actually uh, very true. Okay, so once you guys uh, find the repository, go to the one called GitHub. And then once you guys are there, and again, if you guys need help, make sure to ask for help, right? If you want help, otherwise, you're fine. Hey, bro. You got this. Tony, you're next. I have done a robot. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you guys two minutes to find the repository. 
And make sure you guys click on port. If she doesn't have it, yes. Yeah, so we need to download Git for Git Bash. Yeah, the repository, when they get to the page, make sure they, they, they fork it. I was doing my stream and I wasn't this whole time. I failed to play both. Okay, so when you, once you guys get to this page for the repository, you can click on port. Fork is in the top right. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that like so. Anyone having trouble forking? David, you good? Yeah. Larry and I have been following them. Let's see. David. Even Kelly. Very good job, Kelly. Are we all ready to move on to the next step? So when you go WordPress like this, how do you add that onto the system that you get to the website? If I can do that as a theme, it makes it too solid. Yeah, it's a long conversation. But, uh, yeah, I, I can tell you how it is. Okay, so how many people forked the repository already? Okay. I can see for fun. Oh, you told me to go Oh, I thought you said you couldn't see. Okay, well, while we're waiting, um, for Joseph, <laughs> we can see that we have the, the version for ISD, the GitHub repository here, and then I forked the repository, and this is the version on my account, right? So it says my name, name of the repository, and it tells me, you know, fork from, and it's right there. So I can't say I built this, right? Wonderful. Now if I go back to the original one, it doesn't say fork from anywhere, right? This is the original version of this project, okay? Now, the next step after you fork this repository to your account would be cloning it, right? To your computer so super easy once you get to the repository on your account make sure it's your account okay because if it's not your account and you clone it and then you try to push to it you're gonna get permission denied okay click on clone the big green button right here we click on it and we copy that url that it gives us okay so we copy it copy copy 
cave. Then comes the fun part. Okay. So how many of us are at the cloning stage? Perfect. Okay, so okay. So April's gone. So if you open up git bash, you should be at the very most uh, rootmost directory, right? Better question. Do we all see the squ squiggly line? Perfect. Okay. So if I do cd desktop, for those of you guys on, on a Mac, uh, go to your desktop. Pretty much. So I don't know how to get to your desktop. So Amy probably does. Now, it doesn't really matter where you clone the re repository. It's more about preference. Uh, I normally have a folder where I clone all my projects. Uh, for example, if they're for ISC, I keep them in the folder called ISC. Otherwise, I have a folder called Git. So, for whatever reason. Okay. So, what I just did was from the root, I, I typed in cd desktop. Okay. So I went into the desktop directory. Okay. I then typed in mkdir, make directory, right? And I made the directory called demo. Okay. Then to go into that directory, I typed in cd demo. Okay. So I'm going into that directory. So now if I type in pwd, I can see that I'm in the demo directory, right? Okay, does that make sense so far? Perfect. So now I'm gonna utilize that URL that I got from earlier. I'm gonna type, it, type in git clone, and hopefully this works. Nope, it didn't, I did them. Uh, yeah, so the, the one that you forked over to her account. Perfect. Yeah, I copied it. Making sure I copied it. I'm going to type in git clone. And on uh, Windows, I don't know if it's the same on Mac, but on Windows, you do shift insert and it'll paste it for you. Or you can just do a right click paste, up to you. But it's git clone and then the URL. To that repository that you got, okay, and it works for you. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. I did shift insert all the time. I control shift plus I. No. <laughs> control shift pay attention. Perfect. So I did git clone and then the URL to that git repository, right? And then you can see it does what happened. <laughs> You can see it does all that magic, right? So now you're officially a developer, right? Perfect. So if you do something like ls, you can see that the repository now lives on your machine, right? That's the working directory. So let's go into that project, okay? So how do we do that? Oh, I just deleted it. Too. Okay. For those of you guys that are not very much uh, experienced with with a terminal, and you're lazy. Uh, Got a lot of good tips for you guys. So I start typing in the name of the directory I want, and then I press tab, right? And if it finds it, it'll just populate it for you. Otherwise, it'll give you like what's in the directory, okay? So now I press enter, and I'm inside the directory, okay? You guys notice that it says master now on the right end, okay? That's the name of the branch I'm on. So by default, I'm on master, right? Perfect. I didn't see a lot of, oh, okay. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Blew my mind too. Sorry? There we go. So, we're going to make a branch, right? Now, let's copy the master branch because we're going to work on an awesome feature, right? So, let's do git checkout. We're going to pass the flag, the V flag. And let's call this. Whatever your name is, call that the new branch, right? That's the flag for a copy. I believe so. You should probably Google that. You should probably
probably Google that. Because I do not know. Well, because I'm copying from master. I could just probably not. And that'll be fine. Yeah. But. Explicit, yes. Don't make it complicated. Just explicit. What step are you on right now? <laughs> Tony, I need help. Okay, so on this step, we're doing git checkout dash b. Okay, this will allow me to copy to make a copy of a repository. The first name that we're passing right here is the name of the new branch. Okay, so next you can look at these like parameters, variables, whatever you want, right? And then the next one is, what am I making this copy from? Okay. Like April mentioned, if I leave it blank, it'll pull it from the branch I'm on right now. Right now I'm on master. Okay? So for the sake of clarity, I'm going to put master on there. Okay? So once I press enter, there's going to be a new branch. Are we ready for this? Perfect. Okay. You guys saw that? Magic, right? <laughs> Don't laugh at this. I'm excited. <laughs> Okay, so we're on a new branch called my name, right? How do you guys pronounce this? Lone? Oh. We were friends. Okay. So, ignoring that uh, horrible pronunciation, if we look at git branch, okay, it shows me the branches I have in my project, right? So how do you think we can switch over to master again? Perfect. So we do git checkout and the name of the branch, right? So you can see I'm on master again. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to mine. Oops. Just pulled my own name. Okay. Now I'm on that branch again. Okay. So I want to see what files are on there. So what I want everyone to do is the following. Um, let me think about this real quick. So you're going to make your own file, right? And you're going to fill this file with whatever you did for Thanksgiving, okay? So you guys can watch me do it real quick, and then you guys do it as well, okay? So let's call it, I'll call mine my name, so it's easier. And it'll be a text file, okay? So you guys can see that I'm doing touch. I'm naming the file my name, go on, dot text. It'll be a text file, right? Perfect. Here, I made the file, right? I don't know why they call it touch, to be honest. Makes no sense to me, but there must be a good reason. So I named it my, my first name and then the extension for a text file, right? So once you do this, you should have a new file in that directory called your first name.txt. Okay? Now if you do nano, hopefully you have nano installed. Okay? Nano, and you pass it the name of a file, it'll open that file and you can edit it. Okay? Is everyone there or April? You're looking at me like. Oh, it's downloading. Oh, it's the internet. That's horrible. I am so sorry. Yeah, that's all. You're switching between branches, and these branches are are local on your machine, so you still haven't pushed anything up. So. Hmm? <laughs> You'll see, you'll see. Okay, so let me go back. I'm going to edit my file. Okay, so nano, name of the file. Uh, and what I did for Thanksgiving. Okay, now that's all I did. So I'm going to do control O. I pressed a lot of buttons here, sorry. Control C should save, Control X gets me out. Okay, but I have the habit of being Control O, pressing Enter, then pressing all the buttons between C and then X. So for some reason. Get nano, so again. I'm sorry? No. Get bash. Do get bash. I don't know nothing about the net front. Burn it. No. Burn it. No, it's not. 
So let's say I'm editing the file again. I press Control C, saves it, Control X to exit. It's gonna ask you to wanna save the modified buffer. Yes, and then enter, bam, done. Okay, or you could have been using your favorite editor, hopefully not Adam. Just to spite you. I know, right? That's great. Yep. I'm just gonna stick with Adam. Yeah, this is one. So I don't use Sublime Text for, for work. Uh, I use it for like uh, working with text. We'll get there. There's no reason why you, you should have to do it that way. Okay, so if I so I just made changes with Sublime. If I go back in there and look at this uh, at this file, we can see that my changes are there, right? So let's get out. Now, has everyone made their their, their file? Perfect. So you guys are still working on it, right? Okay, perfect. Okay, David, uh, have we made our file? Don't lie to me, David. I know you're on Fortnite. <laughs> Did you make your file? Do you need help? I'm looking at you. No. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. You made your file? You, yeah, you, you said yeah. Okay. What happened? Anyway? Oh, permission issues? Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So I'll give you guys another minute before I show you more magic. <laughs> 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 I've noticed about uh, David yeah. is that uh, there are ways you can do things <laughs> where they don't cause you problems, right? Yes. For example, when you're working on a project, you could initialize it and then set the uh, origin and everything. What? Right? When I can just go on Google.com, click on the repository, and then close yeah. it, and then drop on one files, and then I'm done. Oh, so just do Right? Yeah. So you can just do it that way too. So. Up to you, whatever way you want to uh, learn how to do it. Let's so oh, yes. let me know and I'll yeah. get it. <laughs> so the way I do this is I go on github.com, make the new repository, clone it, and I drop my files into that directory. Yep, well, I'll have you do all that work, whatever. Much easier. Okay. Are we good? What part are you on? Trying to find out what's desktop name for that. Oh, it doesn't have to be on desktop. It can go wherever you want. I just find it easy to put it on the desktop. Do you have like a bunch of things on your desktop? You do too? No. I have like current screenshots that I need. Let me give you the commands to format your hard drive. Uh huh. Let me Google. <laughs> I feel like you should put that on your computer. Oh, on this one? No. I probably do it just like testing. Good <laughs> <laughs> my computer. I go back to service desk. What happened? <laughs> I messed up. Okay, so does everyone have their uh, new text file? Yes, no. Okay. Oh, okay, perfect. Joseph, how far are you? Let me know 
It takes a while. Did check out the new flag, and then give it the name of the new branch, or the name of the branch you're popping off of. You're duplicating that pretty much. And if you don't know what something does, this should work. Can check it out. Create and reset and check code. So, yeah, so you have all the knowledge at your fingertips. So, Give me your own lesson. <laughs> it's, it's good. Think about it that way. You break it down into components, and any components that make sense to be together, that's one of right? So. It's like 